Welcome back to another episode of The Scoreboard. We've got a little bit of a, a different set today because uh, Smokey is sick. He lost his voice. He can't talk. He hasn't been able to talk uh, all week. I personally think he's just dodging the show because the Falcons lost an opener they should have won, but that's neither here nor there. He's not here this week. He'll be back next week. He sent me his picks, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through these games. I'll walk you through Smokey's picks and I'll give my own. There's not that many we disagree on this week if you want to uh, if you hear the spoilers right away, but um, that's how it's going to go. That's why the show is a little bit shorter. That's why it's just like a little bit lower uh, production quality, but we want to get those picks out there anyway. To recap, last week Smokey already sent me uh, sent me the results of last week as well. Unsurprisingly, I'm up by two points, 12 to his 10. A um, couple of disagreements, but I was able to come away with them, uh, luckily for me. Uh, for example, I picked the Chicago Bears, he picked the Titans. That was the uh, that was a point where I won, and then the Eagles uh, over the Packers I had as well. So 12 and 10, not too bad of a result, both of our sides. But uh, yeah, we had a couple duds as well, and we're going into week two of the NFL season. So let's hop right into these games. We'll go through them. I'll give you Smokey's pick, I'll give you mine, and I'm going to tell you why I'm going to win this week as well. So we start off on Thursday night with our first disagreement. Uh, this is the primetime game. This is the Bills and the uh, and the Dolphins. It's in Miami, and uh, Smokey is picking the Buffalo Bills to win this one. Now, that's after two weeks of tearing down the Bills and saying how little help they have at receiver and how, uh, how sort of a, a difficult season they're going to be in. They struggled, came back against the Cardinals, if that if the Cardinals won that game, I'm the one who's not showing up this this week. By the way, after what I said about Arizona, and they surprised me positively, even though they didn't end up winning the game. Buffalo got it done. Now they're having to go to Miami. Miami in a similar vein, sort of had more difficulty than they should have, but they end up winning the game. Uh, I'm going with the Dolphins. Uh, Smoke Smokey has the Bills. I'm taking the Dolphins. I think this is the uh, the marquee match for this division, and uh, the Dolphins have the advantage playing at South Beach. I think they'll be at full strength. I think their offense just has a little bit more firepower. Even the Bills have the slightly better quarterback. The offense have better um, better setup all the way around. The pass rush for Miami is only getting better. That defense is only is only getting stronger, especially against a Josh Allen, who is largely by himself. And I think they'll do a pretty good job defending the run as well. So I'm going to take the Dolphins at home. And this is our first uh, disagreement with Smokey here for the week. Raiders and the Ravens. There's not much to say here. Smokey picks the Ravens. I'm picking the Ravens. They lost a narrow opener to the Kansas City Chiefs. They outscored the Chiefs in penalties only. Uh, surprise, surprise. But it was a buzzer beater at the end. Uh, about the length of a half a big toe was the difference between going to overtime and or maybe even maybe even winning the game um, for the Ravens and, and losing it at Kansas City. So still an impressive opener. Lamar Jackson looked good. Uh, the Raiders with Gardner Minshew. Look, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm rooting for them to not be terrible. Even though I don't particularly like the Raiders, I do like Gardner Minshew. I have nothing against the guy, and Antonio Pierce is a good story. But uh, they just don't have that caliber roster um, to really bother Baltimore much. So we're going Ravens. We're in agreement there. Chargers and the Panthers again. Very little debate. We're both taking the Chargers. They had a very good opener. They got it done. Finally broke that curse. They won their first game. Uh, Jim Harbaugh, a big debut, and uh, it's a brand new look to the offense that still has some kinks that need to be ironed out, but uh, they're going to do the job. The Panthers got completely destroyed by the Saints, who aren't much better of a team, as we thought, going into the season. So that does not spell good good things for Carolina. Uh, they're going to lose against, uh, against the Chargers there at home. Speaking of the Saints, they are visiting Dallas to play the Cowboys. Cowboys won. They had it done this, and there was nothing I would have loved more than to see the Cowboys lose their opener after paying Dak Prescott like five times the money he's worth uh, on the same day. It would have been the, the best thing ever, but they got it done. They beat the Browns. Okay, congratulations, right? The Cowboys are good uh, at the start of the season. And uh, Smokey and I are in agreement, right? They're going to beat the Saints, even though the Saints had an amazing win. If it had come against any other team that's not the Panthers, we would have been a lot more impressed. So we don't know a lot about where the Saints are. We know they're better than we thought they were. Derek Carr looked better than we thought he was going to. But uh, Dallas is just a more talented roster. So Cowboys keep it at home. The Bucks and the Lions. We have another agreement here. Lions are going to win. Bucks looked good. Baker Mayfield looked good. But the Lions won in a playoff atmosphere. In a playoff rematch or revenge match 
against the Rams and Matthew Stafford. They uh, once again prevailed like they did last year in the playoffs. This Lions team is becoming a big-time team. Uh, and it, it took them a little bit of experience. It took them uh, a little bit of time to get going. But I think they're they're getting that clutch gene. They're, they're getting that big-time experience. And that's what's going to help them eventually, if they get in another situation like they did last year, to make that jump and go all the way. Where last year, the only reason they did not go to the Super Bowl is because they, well, they, they were lacking the experience. They were lacking the clutch and they choked it away uh, when they should have won the championship game. I don't think this will happen to them again. Uh, they've proven it again this year uh, with the Rams. This team's there to stay. Lions are for real. They're keeping it at home. Colts and the Packers. Now, here's an interesting one, right? No Jordan Love. He's injured. But we do believe the Packers are the better football team. Smokey's taking the Colts here. He thinks Indianapolis is going to pull a fast one in Green Bay. I'm not so convinced about that. Yeah, the Colts look better than we thought they did, and they really stayed in that game. But the Packers, it's a, it's going to be like a mixed bag. Right? Packers are out. Jordan Love, Malik Willis is the next man up, which doesn't exactly spell high promise. But uh, I'm going to still go with the Packers. I think they've gotten a lot better defensively. I think they've gotten a lot better offensively. I think aside from the quarterback, take the quarterback situation out. This is probably the best Packers roster we've seen maybe in the last 10, 15 years. So this is a big step forward for them. I think this is the time they have to step up and show it that uh, Michael Fleur is going to have to step up uh, and show the, uh, the, the experience as a head coach and get it done without a starting quarterback. Green Bay keeps the points at home. Cleveland and the Jaguars. Now, Smokey's picking the Jags. And for me, this is a game that I've had to debate about for a while because uh, Cleveland didn't look very good against, against Dallas. And Jacksonville lost a close one. But um, I'm, I'm with Smokey on this one. I'm taking the Jaguars. I'm just believing them a little bit more to be consistent in the Browns right now. I just don't know what to make of this Deshaun Watson thing. He's just not the player he used to be at this point in time. The running game isn't what he used to be. So this Browns offense might have some real struggles and be an issue going deeper into the season. We're both taking Jacksonville. 49ers are hosting the Vikings. Niners got the job done at home against the Jets without Christian McCaffrey. They looked really good. Vikings also looked very good. And Sam Darnold is low-key the MVP favorite after week one. No, it's not the favorite. He's the he's the MVP rank leader, maybe. If the season ended today, maybe Sam Darnold would be the MVP for Minnesota. There's one that you didn't expect. But is he going to be able to keep that up against a defense like San Francisco? I don't think so. Though I, th- I know he's good. <laughs> yeah, he was the 49ers quarterback um, for a while there last year. Last year as a backup, so... He knows that system, he knows that defense, but the Vikings don't have the kind of class that uh, that San Francisco does. So Smokey and I agree, Niners are going to win this one at Minnesota. We also agree that the Seahawks are going to win at New England. Now here's the thing, listen. The Patriots pulled off the upset of the week. Going into Cincinnati and winning um, was the, the least expected result that we've seen, by far. Can they repeat? We're both still skeptics. Seahawks looked extremely mediocre. Uh, Patriots a lot better than they than we thought they would be. So maybe we're just a little bit late to the party and adjusting, but we're conservative here. We're both picking Seattle. Maybe 2-0 and Patriots would uh, turn some heads, though. Jets and the Titans. For this one, Smokey uh, is picking the Jets. I think Aaron Rodgers will turn around. I am inclined to agree. I think Aaron Rodgers had a decent debut for the Jets. Nothing extreme, nothing crazy happened. But the Jets seem to have a big problem holding on to the football both in terms of ball carrying and ball catching that's something that cost them the game against the Niners early and in the sort of mid, early and middle and, and late game as well um, crucial drops when they didn't need to occur obviously that fumble uh, and we saw Aaron Rodgers get, get frustrated with his receivers very quickly and you know, that is something they s- certainly have to work on if they do uh, I think they're still a promising team. Their defense is good, even though they did not play the run well at all last week against a backup running back. I I still do think they have the class to beat Tennessee. I think Aaron Rodgers alone will be able to do it against these sort of average-ish mediocre teams. Aaron Rodgers will be making the difference. But last week, they were outclassed at most positions, and there's a lot of work to do for the Jets. Giants and the Washington Commies. Now, both of these teams are very, very hard to really put uh, put away. 
but um, smoke is going giants and for me I'm kind of flipping a coin here I think they're both pretty lackluster uh, but I'm, I'm gonna stick with my guns from the preseason I'm going Washington I believe in Jaden Daniels he's my favorite quarterback out of this class I think he's the best quarterback out of this class I think he'll turn into something very good if put in the right environment so for me Washington we have another disagreement Smokey sticking with the Giants Rams and the Cardinals we both agree that the uh, the Cardinals uh, are not going to win this one though uh, they did, did look a lot better than I thought they would so maybe they have a shot here no Puka Nakua for the Rams um, but we are still both taking LA to get it done with the just higher quality roster Steelers and Broncos is a very difficult one to pick the Steelers with maybe a tiny bit of an upset win against the Falcons which was a very ugly game and mostly it was lost by the Falcons more than the Steelers won it but uh, defensively they got it done I mean TJ Watt looks like an absolute menace again and um, he's a he's a game racker Broncos yeah I, I don't know I don't really know what to, th what to think of the Broncos Bo Nix had a bit of a bit of a struggling start but uh, he found he found um, his game a little bit, but I think there's still a lot of work to do for the Denver Broncos. To me, and also to Smokey, the Steelers are just a little bit further along, um, and we'll get this win. So Steelers win at Denver. Now, we both also agreed that the Chiefs are going to keep the points at home here against the Bengals. This is not as hard of a decision now as we thought it was going to be with what Cincinnati did last week and how they lost that game to potentially the worst team in football. Um, but this is almost like stereotypical now. They do it every year, right? This, the Bengals start the season terribly. And I, I don't know what it is, what they do wrong. Like in training camp, the first two, three weeks, Cincinnati's just bad. And we think, what, what's happened? Have they all fallen off? But then the class comes back. As Joe, Joe Burrow's still there. Jamar Chase is still there. And it turns out they're fine. But they're very vulnerable in the first few weeks of the season. Cincinnati, Cincinnati is. Um, Chiefs will take, uh, take care of that this one. The Bears and Texans is one of the more intriguing matchups, and they put this in the late slot. They put this as the late night game. So they have a lot of faith in these young quarterbacks. Um, I personally have a lot of faith in CJ Stroud, and I'm picking the, the Texans to win this one comfortably. So is Smokey, by the way. Um, the Bears really got away with one. The Bears won a game they should not have. Caleb Williams looked um, uh, he looked underwhelming for most of the game, but they did managed to end up clutching it out got it done um in a big comeback but uh they are going to need to see a lot more out of him and the, that young rookie group that talented group uh if they're going to live up to the to the potential especially in a division with the very very strong alliance and surprisingly good vikings and then finally the reason Smokey is not here today the underachieving atlanta falcons are going into lincoln financial field to play the Philadelphia Eagles in their territory who won a game that Smokey didn't think they would so it's not looking great he says he's picking the Eagles and I'm quoting him here word for word because I refuse to pick the Falcons until they win oh how poetic right it's same thing every year it's almost like Groundhog Day he's not picking the Falcons until they win because he curses the team or he seems to believe that he curses the team if he picks them they lose uh, the only way they win is he does not pick them well, I'm not going to do him the favor of uh, of giving the Falcons this win either. I'm taking the Eagles. They got it done against the Packers in a close game. But still, they did. They did it at home. Well, it wasn't really at home. They played in Brazil, but they were the home team. And now they're playing actually at home against Kirk Cousins, who clearly has growing pains in this offense. We really don't know where that's going to be at. So Philadelphia very much the favorite and i think they will get this win on monday night now that's all the games for week two again Smokey could not be here this week so i hopefully uh made a decent uh substitute for him he gave me his picks i agreed with both of them i think there are a lot of reasonable picks there uh picking the bills is perfectly fine picking the giants is perfectly fine um maybe the colts is the most out there pick but i know he based it on the quarterback idea right so, but uh, those are only just a few disagreements that we had. Other than that, um, let's see where this week takes us. Leave us your comments in the, uh, yeah, well, leave us your comments in the comments. Leave us your predictions. Tell us what you think about these games. Anything that you disagree with us, with both of us, or what's a, what's a bold prediction for week two. And uh, maybe soon we'll also start the uh, MVP rank votings every week again. I'm curious to see if we get some new names on that list. So 
Let us know what you think. Drop us a like. And uh, hopefully we will see you in the next one. Really